I'm, I'm Mike Boyle, Vice President Plant Manager here at Kawasaki. Um, welcome, by the way. Uh, we've been here, I've been here for 30 years, uh, and uh, we're gonna take about a two hour uh, cruise around the plant here today, so. It's receiving warehouse, so uh, we, uh, all of our incoming parts come in here that go into our products. About 55% uh, of what we put in our products are, are US based, and actually North America, US and Canada. Um, the other 45% come from a majority from Japan, but also Taiwan, China, so uh, Me Mexico and Europe. So uh, we receive parts from all over the place. We, uh, we make electric starter motors for our uh, commercial mower market engines. And this is the uh, shell for a motor starter. Our wheels come in as our steel coils. We cut the coils to either a length or to a round disc. So here's an example of a, a center disc before it becomes a center disc. And here's the automated machinery over here that, that makes that happen. Here's the wheel manufacturing process. So we start with a a length of, of material. The material, we coil it into a, a tube, and then we weld that tube together. It's kind of a forging process. After forging it, we trim off the weld right here, and then we put the, this into a spinning machine. It's similar to a potter making a vase out of clay. Uh, we use hydraulic pressure to form the wheel around a mandrel. By doing that, we can, we can actually move material to high stress areas, we can minimize the weight of the wheel. So our wheels are lighter weight than normal processing of wheel. So um, then form the, the uh, tire seat area and weld in the center, the center disc, and then we paint them in our with our paint Kawasaki robots. Our production rate right now is about seven a day for our jet ski. I mean, it's, it's the off season. We're building the models right now for next summer, so. We're just kind of, for us, it's better to kind of keep the line running a little bit, uh, to kind of keep our worker training to a high level. So uh, you won't see many products on this line. It was gonna move real slow, but that's the way it is right now. We, we ramp this up uh, around December, uh, this time frame. We'll, we'll kick this up to a much higher level. Um, you can see there's a, a hole right here that has the engine installed. So, uh, and here's a deck sitting here in this robot cell. So. This robot applies structural adhesive to the deck, and we, we join the hull and the deck together right here. After the engine, the gas fuel tank, all the large components are put into the hull. So this is a much simpler way of assembling, much more efficient. Um, because these jet skis, if you look at those engines in a jet ski deck, a simple hull deck, it looks like 10 pounds of crap in a five pound container. So doing it this way is much easier on the operators and you can get to it easier and then we glue them together after it's taken care of, so. So, so an operator, over all of our workstations, we have a pendant like that. So if an operator's having a problem, be it they're, they're behind, they have to use a restroom, they're missing parts, they got, you know, whatever the issue might be, they can call for assistance. So about every 10 people is a team, and we have a person, kind of a team leader for that team, and that, the team leader will come and, and answer that call that distress call, or whatever, that help, that ask for help call. So every operator has the right to stop the assembly line if they have an issue. We don't want things continuing. We wanna solve whatever they got, the problem is right now. That's, that's the most efficient, the most least expensive way of taking care of that. So, so, you know, this is a key area as far as making a quality product because when you're bending pipe, there's always a little bit of spring back in the pipe. So um, if you don't watch that, when it goes to the robot weld cell, they may not line up very well, and you have a gap between the different different components in the chassis, and then you got a problem. The robot doesn't see that, you know, they're just dumb machines, and they make a crappy weld, or a bad one. So the, these machines uh, and, the, and the test of verification and testing is really important. So when they start running pipe, we have a, we have a laser, laser system, measuring system over here. In the laser system, we, we use that to verify and make adjustments to the machinery to make sure that we get repeatable, repeatable pipe coming off these machines. Uh, after it's welded together, the frame is brought here. This is one of our uh, electro deposition powder paint lines. You see 
these uh, these components are going in for the washer the washer system. Uh, after they come off the paint line, then they come over to the center area, which is the the uh, assembly line. We're gonna walk along the assembly line here. <laughs> Over here it says plan and actual. So as of right now, we should have built 22 units. We've built 25. Our plan for the day is 54. Okay. So that, that kind of rotates up on top now, 22 and 25. So it's kind of it keeps itself up to date. And the amount, of, the amount of time the line has stopped here is five minutes and nine seconds. So they've had issues, five minutes worth of issues on the line. A cornstarch film with ink jet depo deposit driplets on it. And we put the ink, we put the film in the water. A uh, solvent will spray over the top of it, and you and you'll see it change into a liquid. The film into a liquid. The robot will then pick up the part which has a special primer coating on it, and dip it into the film. And the key thing about this process is that's a two-dimensional surface in the water, and it's a three-dimensional product. So the robot, the programming of the robot is really important to keep the distortion of the leaves and branches to a minimum. So now we're gonna kind of focus the tour on the, on the Mule Pro right now. So um, this, these are our laser cutting operations over here. And I kind of mentioned in the uh, presentation this morning, we bought a new laser and I'm gonna show you that here in just a moment. Um, this machine uh, does what's called flow drilling, and we, uh, we actually take, uh, on tubing, we actually take a, a, a tool and, uh, and, and spin it on the, on, the, on the pipe, and then it plunge it into the material. What that does is that it takes the, the top of the, the surface of the steel and forms a cone going into the pipe, and it allows us to do some, uh, uh, get some, uh, self-tapping screws. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice way of making a, uh, a hardware attachment, and it's a very strong way of doing that. So um, for whatever reason right now, they're not, they're not running anything, but we, we're starting to use that quite a bit on our products, is that, that, that self-tapping flow drill type, type system. So. See, here's an example where it's cutting, and, and this pipe, It's meant to fit up against the other pipe, and so you know that that's this may not be the right diameter, but in general that's what it's supposed to do, and it, and it ensures a, a good fit and, and a minimal gap. So when we go to weld it, it's it's easy to do. When, when you weld when you weld with machines like that, you can you can pace at how much heat you put into the frame. You can regulate that, and, and you can you can determine what your distortion is going to be because of that because you're, you're having that equipment do the timing. And so you can set your, your fixtures up so that when the frame distorts, because all, all welding distorts something. So as your frame distorts, you can set your fixturing up so that, that it distorts into the specification that you want. So when you do that, when you have equipment set up like this and do that, you can be, you can be very repeatable, very precise, and make sure that things, when they get to assembly, they fit very well together. And they do it same way every time, no matter what. We have uh, about 350 people actually welding on site. We got a lot of welders. We got a lot of machines do it, we still got a lot of people doing it. We, this is the first engine run up right here after it's been installed. We do it right here where in case there's a problem with the engine, it's still in a state where we can do something about it. Of course, when the engine is built elsewhere, it goes through a run-up period before you can get shipped here too, so. That's what she's just putting the decal on now. And that is harder than it looks. That is, that is tough.